Wow, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on the time of the hour that you're watching this program and depending, depending on where you are, uh, this is Beholding Christ Show and my name is Ben Fetcher and I'm so delighted this hour because of the goodness of the Lord, because of the favor of God. And I welcome you. Thank you for tuning in to Wema TV. This is a place where you cannot afford to miss because this is one of the best channels. This is one of the best TV channels where you get to hear the gospel truth and your life can never be the same again. So I am so happy this day to invite you and I would like you to also call your friends, tell them that the show is on and we are learning Christ. As we usually say that beholding Christ is about helping us to focus on Christ, seeing Christ in everything. Because the more we see him, the more we look at him, the more we are changed into the same image. The drive of our of beholding Christ show is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It talks about us beholding him. And as we behold him, the more we look into him, the more we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So most of the things that people struggle with in life is not because of the devil, but it is because they have not known Christ. The moment you get to know Christ by beholding him, you get to know yourself and you live a victorious life. I'm so excited about it. And I believe you are also excited about it. And today, today I am not alone. You've been seeing me alone, but today I'm not alone. I am so excited because I have a team with me Actually, it's good to let you know that uh, we have a, a, a family or a group or a, I don't know what to call it. It's a family called Christ Beholders. And that is where we got this show from, Beholding Christ. And today, for the very first time on Wema TV, I want to introduce to you the Christ Beholders family. And uh, it's a team, it's a, it's a family of young and old Everyone who loves the gospel, everyone who understands and would, like, would love to learn the gospel. This is where we fellowship. And uh, Christ Beholders is a great family. We have members from all counties. We have members from other countries. We have people from the USA who are members of this family. We have others from South Africa who are members of this family. We have others from other countries. And you can also be part of this. And we are delighted. So today I am with uh, some of the people who lead, some of the leaders of the Christ Beholders uh, ministry. And uh, on my left, I have a, a very blessed gentleman. He is a blessing to, to, uh, to us. And uh, his name is Bonnie Glorious. So Bonnie Glorious. Yes, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for coming. And I believe that uh, we'll have a wonderful time together. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Then on my right, on my right, I have a, a guy that I love so much. His name is I.K. Ian Kamande. He also calls himself I.K.R. Ian Kamande Royalty. Yes. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for, yes. for joining us today. Thank you. Yes, yes. So those are the people that we are having today. And uh, I want us to get into our topic of discussion today. And we'll be talking about the grace of God. Hallelujah. I'm excited. There is nothing I like to talk about like the grace of God. And uh, because the grace of God is what has qualified me even to be here. Because if it was about what I do, if it was about what I should do every day, I could not qualify, but the grace of God has made it possible for me to be alive today, has made it possible for me to have, not just to be alive, but to have the life of God and to have a relationship with God. So I would like us to, I I would like you, Bonnie Glorious, to start start this conversation with you. I would like you to tell us briefly uh, more about yourself. Introduce yourself to us. I know some of you know you, and some of us know you. And I want you to introduce yourself mm-hmm. and a bit of what the grace of God has done for you wow. before we even define the grace of God. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it? Oh, those who are watching us, thank you so much for being present with us. And we are so blessed to be here. And one of the most amazing things, <laughs> what defines me from a personal point and yep. far more of who I am, is the word of God. Mm-hmm. One of the most amazing things in this world to ever have is to receive the word of God. When we received that word, 
everything about us changed. Everything about me personally, because I'm the daughter speak personally about me. <laughs> <laughs> everything concerning me changed. <laughs> and so, like every other person in the word of God, anyone who came across this truth, everything about them changed, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, one of the most remarkable truths about me is that there's a time that I didn't even have a uh, right identity of who I am. <laughs> I didn't have a knowledge of what I'm supposed to do. I didn't have a knowledge of what to think because I was again limited to, <laughs> to a certain level of thinking. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord started defining me, what the word of God did, it came and brought an understanding as the, as the word of God says, Paul is saying to the book of to the people of Ephesians, he tells them that when you read my writings, which I've written to you briefly, mm -hmm. you will have my you will have an understanding of what the Lord wanted to teach, mm -hmm. the mystery that the Lord wanted to teach. So you will have a reality, you will have an understanding of how everything is as it should be. Mm -hmm. So he came to give us the mind of Christ. And when the word of God came to me, it gave me the mind of Christ. And every time I'm looking at things, I'm not looking at them from my own perspective, but I'm seeing them with the mind of Christ. As John prophesied that he came to bring back the fathers and the sons together. Wow. So he brought back my thinking, everything about me to the father. That is what the word of God did to me. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. What do you have to say about the same uh, IKR, <laughs> Ian Kamande? Yeah, there is Ian Kamande, royalty. And uh, I call myself royalty because now I know who I am. As Bonnie has said, this word has given us an identity. Mm -hmm. And not only an identity, it has also given us a nature, mm -hmm. a new nature. I have received the nature of God. Wow. Yeah. You know, there is there is nothing more interesting and big than to know that you have the nature of God in you. Yeah. You're not only you're not only a pastor, you're not only a man, mm -hmm. but you are a God man. Wow. You know, you live you live from the nature of God. Yes, yeah. God. That is one thing that uh the word has done to me. Mm -hmm. It has defined my it has first given me an identity, defined my nature. Mm -hmm. And in faith has defined my character, you know, because now I know that, uh, sorry, <laughs> I know that uh, it's, it is the word of God that defines how, what I do. Mm -hmm. It is the nature of God that creates my character. Wow. So I do not live from what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't live from, from, from what, what I know in, the, in my mind, mm -hmm. but I live from what I know from the mind of God because wow. it is the word of God that defines even my thinking. Praise oh, God. Yes. So he talks about you talk about what you know from the mind of God. Yes. And uh, from the beginning of time, yeah. I've realized that God had a vision for humanity. Yeah. And the vision of God mm -hmm. is to have a relation, like you also said about reconciling the the sons to the fathers. Yeah. And uh, what I see is that God had a plan yeah. and his plan was to have a perfect relationship with man, yeah. to have an intimate relationship with man, yeah. to have that uh, oneness with man, sure. such that the, the divinity yeah. should live in humanity. Yeah. And we see that actually that should be the, the definition of Christianity, yeah. where divinity yeah. lives in humanity. Yeah. But uh, there is something that happened in the, in the book of Genesis yeah. after Adam and Eve sinned. Yeah. And sin entered into the world through that one man. Yeah, sure. And death reigned because of sin. Yeah. And we know the definition of death mm -hmm. is separation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So men were separated from God. Yeah. Not God separated from man. Wow. It is wow. men who are separated from God. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Yes, that is wonderful. Because God has never separated himself from man. What? It is man uh -huh. who separates himself from God yeah. because of his sense of guilt. Oh. But now, we realize that there is something bad that happened. Yeah. And that thing hindered man from relating with God. Yeah. And I believe now that is why Jesus comes. Uh -huh. And Jesus comes with the grace of God. Yeah. Not just with the grace of God, yeah. as the personification of grace. There is this verse, and I would like us to read that verse in the book of John. John chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, because I want this to be, uh, to be the driving 
uh, to be the driving bus of our conversation today. He says, John 1.16, mm-hmm. and I'm reading from the New King James, says, and of his fullness, mm-hmm. we have all received and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, yeah. but grace and truth mm-hmm. came through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wow. He says, the law was given yeah. through Moses, yeah. but grace and truth mm-hmm. came yeah. through Jesus Christ. Yeah. So what is so amazing about grace? Mm -hmm. Why is it written that uh, the law is given through Moses, but when it comes to grace, it's Jesus himself who comes? What 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 makes it so so? You know this when you see that grace and truth came. Yeah. So it's like Jesus. The coming of Jesus was the coming of grace. Yeah. And it was the coming of truth. Yeah. Does it mean Mm -hmm. a man had not experienced that grace before Christ came? Yeah. And does it mean yeah. that the truth had not been experienced before Christ came? Okay. Mm, what do you think? Uh, allow me to be layman. Yes. <laughs> Let me use the Mr. Layman. layman. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's for the sake of those who are listening. Yes. <laughs> the layman language, mm-hmm. declare, like, for example, if I'm, there's something that I want to bring to some people, yes. and I know my heart is not for it to go. Mm. Or I know... I am going to wrong them if I take it myself. Mm-hmm. I will look for a substitute who will take it to them, but not willingly. I have given it, but because I'm fearing to take it to them. Mr. Lehman, <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> what I'm saying uh-huh. is the law was given through Moses. Yeah. It means that the one, the, the one who is the source of many things or who people have been imparted that he gave it, he didn't want to give it to them because his heart was not for it. Mm-hmm. It's them who demanded for it. Mm-hmm. So for him to, to use a funny way, he had to, it had to go through someone else. But now, the thing that I personally want to come to Pastor Ben, mm-hmm. let's say I have a gift, which I want to bring it to you. Mm-hmm. I cannot look for anyone to bring it to you. Personally, I will look for every way possible and every means to bring it to you personally. Wow. That will communicate wow. something so wonderful. So the same, same thing. I wish happened. you can say that again to, <laughs> the, to, the, to the viewer. <laughs> I'm saying, <laughs> if, if I'm not willing to take something to some people, or I'm taking it with a double-sided mind, I will give it to someone else who will take it on my behalf mm-hmm. you know, for a messenger. Yes. But if something, I want it to go to somebody, and I want them to be so glad. And you say and it is a gift. Yes, it's a gift. <laughs> and take it to him. I personally will look for every means possible, even if it means going there at night. Jesus. Oh. Hey, I will, Rakata, <laughs> I will take it to them <laughs> and give it to them. Wow. Because that is what my gratitude is in. I'm so happy when I take it myself <laughs> because it's coming from my own perspective and from my own mind. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is this is nice. This yeah, is nice. Yes. I, I believe my viewer, you are enjoying this. Yeah. Like I'm enjoying. Yeah. And I'm excited. <laughs> so excited. because this this being about grace yeah. and truth, yeah. it was the best gift that God wanted to give man. Yeah. So hang it to mana. Yeah. He could not send anyone. Okay. He had to come himself. Yes. This other one was given through someone. Yeah. So yeah. that do you mean like uh, this one and uh, this one, which is the law, uh-huh. was not the original plan. Yes, mm-hmm. I will say yes. <laughs> so it was not the original plan yeah. Yeah, that God wanted man, that God wanted to relate with with man. Mm-hmm. And we see that from the from the Garden of Eden, God wanted man. God wanted to associate with man personally. You see, like uh, like a, like a, like a father and, and his child. Mm-hmm. And when you look at our normal relationships with our parents, mm-hmm. our fathers and uh, our mothers, mm-hmm. they do not relate with us according to, to the law. And what do I mean according to the law? They, they do not want to relate with, that, uh, with us according to instructions. Mm-hmm. They want to show us their love, yeah. who they are, mm-hmm. and for us, what we do, we respond. I think you have good parents. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, we have good parents. So they want they want to show us their nature, and for us we respond according to the nature that they have. Wow, they have shown us. Wow, yes. So it's not about trying to instill laws no. and instructions. Yeah, no. 
So what, what kind of an experience can that bring when people are relating with God by the law? Okay, okay so by the law, you know, one thing I've realized mm-hmm. uh, when, you look at, when you look at the normal law in our nation, uh, like you go to a place as written as been written mm-hmm. that is what people exactly do they go there uh, <laughs> so it's like there is something <laughs> in in people yes that makes them to do what they are told not exactly, to do yeah. i remember uh, i had a show yes at moyo fm and i was telling people do not think about a purple elephant <laughs> look at you you're already thinking about about a purple elephant <laughs> <laughs> because I told you, do not think about a purple elephant. Yes. Now you're already thinking about a purple elephant. Yes. Why? Why are you telling me not to think about it? Yeah. So that is what... Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> continue. Because and the, the, what, what the law does in us, it, it brings, it brings uh, something like, you want to do exactly what you're, what you're told not to do. Mm-hmm. And we see it from Eden. Mm-hmm. Exactly what God told man not to do. Yeah. That is what he went ahead and did. Wow. 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 My viewers, I believe you are enjoying this. I didn't, I didn't want us to talk about the law today. I wanted us to talk about the grace of God. Because I realized that uh, the law, the law is a fault finder. I usually say that the law, the, the work of the law is to, to diagnose the disease. The law tells you, you are sick. You are not qualified. You don't meet up the conditions and the standards of God. Yeah. So the law only shows you how wicked you are, yeah, sure. but does not heal you. Very but true. now grace is the cure. Yeah. Yes. Now I want us to focus on the cure. Awesome. In our next, uh, as we are after the break, because I want us to take a short break, yeah. then we'll be back after the break. Yeah. And I want us to take it up from there. Wow. We want, I want us to see now that the law cannot make anyone have a good relationship with God. Yeah. And as we have discussed, I've realized that the law only stirs up sin. Yes. Yeah. Does sure. not give the, the solution to sure. sin. Very it stirs true. up. Yeah. So what about grace? Yeah. How does grace help us in yeah. life? Yeah. So we'll take it up from there after the break. Mm-hmm. I know you're blessed. Don't go away. Stay tuned. This is Beholding Christ Show. We'll be right back after the break. If I'm not willing to take something to some people, or I'm taking it with a double-sided mind, I will give it to someone else who will take it on my behalf, mm-hmm. you know, for a messenger. Yes. But if something, I want it to go to somebody, and I want them to be so glad. And you say and, it is a gift. Yes, it's uh-huh. a gift. Uh-huh. And take it to him. I personally will look for every means possible, even if it means going there at night. So it's like... Jesus, the coming of Jesus was the coming of grace. Yeah. And it was the coming of truth. Yeah. Welcome back. This is Beholding Christ Show. My name is Ben Fetcher. And we continue with our message. With our message today, we've been talking about the grace of God. But in the first part of this episode, we have, uh, we have seen how the law was not able. And it has no ability to change people because the law is a fault finder. It is a fault finder. It only looks at how wrong you are. Mm. It shows you how wicked you are. Yeah. It shows you how you are unqualified. Yeah. It shows you how you are sick, yeah. but does not cure you. Yeah. Sure. But now grace yes. is the cure. Yeah. It's the cure for sin. Yeah. It's the cure for everything that man struggles with. Yeah. And I welcome you back so that we can take it up from there. Yeah. And I want to read Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Where the Bible says, for if by the one man's offense, yeah. death reigned through the one. So the Bible is talking about by one man's offense, this man is Adam, yes. right? Yeah. Death reigned through that one man. Yeah. Death. Death means being separated from God. Yeah. Then he says, mm-hmm. much more. Yeah. I don't know who loves the much more gospel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know the gospel is about the much more. Yeah. He says, much more, <laughs> yeah. those who receive abundance of grace yeah. and of the gift of righteousness yeah. will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Yeah. So he talks about the grace of God. Yeah. And in the verse that we read in our first episode, mm-hmm. uh, in our first, uh, the first part of this episode, yeah. we say it, the law was given through Moses. Yeah. And uh, Body Glorious explained to us yeah. the seriousness of the giver. Yeah. 
because when it's a gift, yes. he yes. comes by himself. Comes, yes, yeah. But when he is giving something that he is not, uh, he does not really like, yeah. he sends someone. Yeah. But now he came. Yeah. Uh, full of grace and truth. Yeah. And now here he tells us mm. that those who receive abundance of grace. Wow. So Jesus came as grace yeah. and truth. Yeah. Now he says those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness mm. shall reign mm. in life through the one Jesus Christ. Mm. So by the law we cannot reign. Yeah. Mm. We can only reign by the grace of God yes. mm. and of the gift of righteousness. Yeah. Now I want us to, to, to see this and uh, to to have a conversation on this direction yeah. because how how does the grace of god help us to reign mm -hmm. how does it help us to reign in life wow yes thank you so much sir mm -hmm. and one of the one of the milestones in life allow me to begin from the beginning mm -hmm. is that i like it yeah. when you begin from the beginning <laughs> because you cannot begin from the end <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure very true yeah. very true and the primary place of God and man, some people say that man has to do something for God to respond to it. Mm -hmm. But I bring a disclaimer, before even man did anything, in fact, before man was created, mm -hmm. God had already done something for man, mm -hmm. even before man came. So what comes from God yeah. was first mm -hmm. than what came from man. Sure. God is the one who had the idea of man. So yeah. even before man came to the play, God had a pre-planned purpose for him and everything relationship, everything that concerns that man, identity, nature, mm -hmm. God had it for him. So yes. even before we, we plan on what we want to do for God, yes, he already has done what he wanted to do for us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And qualified us to do what what we what we can want to do to him <laughs> and for him. <laughs> wow. Interesting. <laughs> qualified. He has qualified us. Wow. wow. That is the word. Mm -hmm. He has qualified us for it. So in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible gives us a clear picture and a clear definition of grace. Mm -hmm. In the first three verses of the Bible, he says, the earth was without form mm -hmm. and it was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Sure, yeah. The earth could have done nothing about itself mm -hmm. and it could have done nothing, absolutely nothing mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. So when it was in that state, God said, let there be light, wow. mm -hmm. and there was light. So the grace of God, or the working power of God, first of all, for it to work for us, we need to understand that it's not what we do to him, or what we do to life for, for us to be qualified somewhere, mm -hmm. but it is what God has done for us, and our place is to receive it. So when we receive it with the understanding that God wanted us to receive it with, mm -hmm. now we can reign in life, because reigning in life means to be above any other thing. Wow. It means to walk over, mm -hmm. The earth is the owner of the earth. Yes. To walk as the one who is over. <laughs> wow. The one. I love that. Yeah. So the grace of God mm -hmm. works where there is nothingness. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> because that, that is what I've seen according to what you've explained. Yeah. That the earth was with nothing. Yeah. Because it's, so it's not like God, God's grace responds yeah. to something people do. Yes. God's grace does not respond to anything that people do yeah it responds to their nothingness yeah mm. uh, 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 that's yeah. amazing now i also go back to the beginning <laughs> we see god blessing man after creating him and he tells him that i bless you may you you shall multiply mm -hmm. and have dominion yeah. over the earth mm -hmm. so another word for reigning in life is having dominion it is being above as bonnie has said mm -hmm. and we see immediately god created man the first instruction and the first blessing he gave man is to multiply and have dominion. Yeah. So God is the one who causes man to reign. Mm. Reigning mm -hmm. is not is not a, is not a result of man trying to work out. Yeah. No, it is a blessing from God. Yeah. yeah. It is God who causes man to reign. So there is no place where our deeds can cause us to reign yeah. without the commandment or the instruction and the blessing from God mm -hmm. for us to reign. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So it's it's all about it's God. Not, it's about God. Mm -hmm. So the grace of God yeah. or the grace yeah. is purely about God. Exactly. Yeah. Nothing of us and all of God. Yeah. So so the grace of God is how God Himself relates with Himself yeah. in us. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Yes. So God wants to relate with himself. Yeah. God wants to relate with us. Yeah. And the only way he could do that yeah. is by coming into us yeah. by his grace. Absolutely. And he has a perfect relationship <laughs> with himself yeah. through us. Through us. Wow. <laughs> I love that. So no wonder, you, no wonder even the Bible says that yeah. uh, we are not supposed, you know, according to the law, the, the law says love others as you love yourself. Yeah. But when Christ came, he said, love mm-hmm. others as I have loved you. Yeah. So it's like you are receiving his love. Yeah. And what I see is like you are you are loving him yeah. with his love. Yeah. It is so it is God yeah. loving himself yeah. in <laughs> us <laughs> through his love. Wow. <laughs> because it's nothing about us. Yeah. Yes. It's all about him. Absolutely. So so you can say that God's way of relating with humanity is mm-hmm. purely by grace. Yeah, absolutely. No one can qualify himself by his works. Yeah, very true. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. But there are people who believe that uh, I have to do something. Yeah. Because you mentioned blessings. Yes. You mentioned the uh, reigning. Yeah. Because that is what we were talking about. Yes, yeah. That I have to do something mm. for 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 okay in order to experience yeah. a perfect life. Yeah. In order to experience wholeness in my life. Yeah. In order to experience uh, blessings in my life, yeah. I have to do something. Yeah. So it is my doing yeah. that qualifies me. Yeah. And those people, sometimes they, they go to the Bible, yeah. like they go to the book of Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. It says, yeah. if you fully obey, mm-hmm. then these blessings yeah. shall follow you. Yeah. What, what do you say about that? Thank you so much, sir, for the place. And I have this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the law never told us to do this. Mm-hmm. The law told us, do not. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the law... The law addresses us on what not to do. The negativity. Yes, the negativity. But now, as we have said in Christ, as Pastor have said, that when Christ came after his death, burial, and resurrection, he did not tell us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm-hmm. He said, as I have loved you, mm-hmm. so you can love others. Mm-hmm. So grace came to tell us what to do mm-hmm. because he has done that for us. Yep. So going, going back to what I had said about uh, the law, mm-hmm. diagonizing and showing you how sick you are. Yeah. For example, the law says, uh-huh. do not commit adultery. Yeah. So it tells you do not, yes. Yes. but does not tell you to love. Uh, yes. your wife. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but when we come to grace, yeah. it says love. Yeah. So it's the same thing what we are saying about, what we are talking about here, that the law shows you how evil you are, yeah. how wicked you are, yeah. and tells you what not to do. Yeah. But now grace is the life yeah. that shows you love. Yeah. Yeah. The law tells you, do not kill, yeah. but leaves you helpless. Yeah, true. But now grace comes uh-huh. and is the love of God yeah. living in us. Uh-huh. You cannot kill yes. if you love. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is this is nice. Yes, this is nice. Yeah, right? and, 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 and the very point, a wonderful point to derive from the same mm-hmm. is this: every time I'm telling you what not to do, like we love so much our our authorities in the nation of Kenya mm-hmm. and all other people, like the officers who are controlling the traffic, mm-hmm. but they will never congratulate you. They will always find fault. I hope there is no traffic officer. <laughs> it's from today. You start congratulating these people. <laughs> yeah. I know you are a fault finder. <laughs> Very, true. Very true. They won't congratulate you. And when that happens, I can assure you something, <laughs> including all of us who are here. Mm-hmm. Like when we are driving, as we always do, yeah. and then one of them lifts up his hand. Mm-hmm. Do you know what will pop up in your heart? Now, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> or what have I not done? Sure. That is what will pop up. And so, the same same thing applies when we think of God to be a fault finder. Mm-hmm. Who, to wow. be a traffic police. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <a> traffic police. <laughs> <laughs> Who, in real sense, he's very good and loving to us. And every time we come, uh, or rather every time we are relating or having fellowship with him, it's not like the heart is condemned when you want to relate with him. No, we should be glad. Because it has shifted from the fault finding, and he did not find fault. Mm-hmm. It came through Moses. When he came, he expressed full the totality of grace and truth. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah. That is nice. That is that is great. Yeah. Uh, now you have mentioned something, and I would, I would like you Ian, to address it. Mm-hmm. Something uh, about uh, like now when a driver 
like we always do. Mm. Yeah. When you see a traffic police, the yeah. first com- the first thing that comes into your mind, what have I done? Mm-hmm. What have I not done? Sure. I know they are believers. Mm. Yeah. Anytime they go to church mm. and they see their pastor, yeah. oh God, am I wearing the right clothes? So they are like, what, am I okay? <laughs> so they are like, this is pastor, what did the pastor say? Yeah. What have I done? Or anytime the pastor calls you, they yeah. feel like, what have I done this time? Yeah. What, what do you say about that? Should that be happening? Really? That should not be happening. You know, that is what we call condemnation mm-hmm. and guilt. That's where those two words come in. Guilt and condemnation. Yeah. You see, most of us, including me in the past, that is how we saw God, as Bonnie has said, mm-hmm. a traffic police. <laughs> Seated there, as we imagined, in his throne, yeah. waiting for you to do a mistake yes. <laughs> and okay. immediately yeah. whip you. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes even we were, uh, sometimes you, you maybe fall sick yeah. and the first thought that comes to your mind, yeah. oh, it is that thing that I did the other day, yeah. I lied to my mom. Yeah. Because in your mind, mm-hmm. God is a fault finder. Yeah. And that is how, Anyway, it is not it is not our mistake because that is how we were taught. Yeah. That is how we were raised. Yeah, sure. You know, that is how we were raised to believe. Yeah. But then you come and realize God is not after your mistake. Yeah. In fact, He does not see your mistake. And that is what grace reveals. Yeah. Grace reveals to you yeah. how God sees you. Mm-hmm. And the law reveals to you, uh, the, the, that is what the law does not reveal to you. Yeah. The law, the, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the law reveals to you yeah. Your mistakes, yeah. as we have said, yeah. your faults. It exposes your mistakes. Yeah, sure. But because the I grace of God. That has... My mistake is a revelation. It's, it's just <laughs> exposing me. It's, it's exposed naturally. <laughs> it exposes to you your wickedness. You know? Yeah, yeah. But the grace of God uh, reveals to you uh, how God sees you. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Wow. And yes. that that has, has, has uh, led me to a verse that I love in the book of Romans, chapter 1, yeah. verse 16. And 17. Yeah. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Yeah. And actually, when you're talking about the gospel of Christ, you're talking about the grace of God. Yeah, sure. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, yeah. for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Yeah. So the the only way to experience the grace of God at work is by believing. Yeah. Yes. Then he says, yeah. For the Jews first yeah. and also for the Greek. Mm. Verse 17 is mm. very important. Yes. Some, it's in line with what you've said. Mm. Yeah. For in it, in mm. what? In, in the in gospel, the in the grace of God, yeah. what is revealed? The righteousness of God. Mm. And it is revealed from faith mm. to, to faith. faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Yes. yes. So, what is revealed in the gospel, in the grace of God, mm. is the righteousness yeah. of God. Yeah. Mm. Very true. And and we read Romans 5.17, yeah. says, mm. they that receive a balance of grace yeah. and of the gift of righteousness. Mm. To me, it looks like the grace of God and righteousness are working hand in hand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what is so big about righteousness? Righteousness. Uh, and for that matter, the righteousness of God. Mm. Oh, not <laughs> that. Righteousness. <laughs> yeah, the righteousness of God. Mm-hmm. And as the word suggests, it is rightness. The rightness which is of God. Mm-hmm. Grace is what Christ has done to qualify us mm-hmm. or to allow us to access what God has already done for us in Christ. Mm-hmm. That is grace. Mm-hmm. Righteousness is what he has established in us for us to view ourselves wow. in that same mind. Wow. wow. Yeah? Mm-hmm. What the gospel is good news. Mm-hmm. Good news is what we are saying is a traffic officer. You'll be congratulating men. <laughs> <laughs> wow, today you have you have maintained the speed, sir. <laughs> that was so good. So when now I don't see that coming, but anyway. <laughs> let's let's keep believing. Yeah, let's keep on believing. So yes. now <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the good news comes, which is the gospel, it reveals the righteousness of God. So it shows that now your confidence, the, 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 your confidence towards the officer has been built. So you know that he means well for you. Mm-hmm. So you won't be afraid every time you approach him or every time you are coming in a, in a place where they are open. So the rightness of God or the, the, the gospel of God, the grace, the abundance of grace is what establishes us mm-hmm. in God. And then righteousness 
is what gives us the confidence. It is what is established in our hearts. Mm -hmm. That's why it is a revelation. Mm -hmm. It is revealed in the gospel. So when you, when you minister the gospel, there in the gospel, a righteousness of God is revealed mm -hmm. from faith to faith. And then when that happens, they just live by faith mm -hmm. because they believe in the rightness which is of God. And that is how we reign. Wow. Yeah. Reign through righteousness. Absolutely. Righteousness. Righteousness. Now, there's something here said. The righteousness of, of God. It is the righteousness of God that is being proclaimed. I keep missing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's the righteousness <laughs> of God. <laughs> it is not the righteousness of man. Yeah. This reminds me of a... Do we have a righteousness of man? Yeah, there, it's called self-righteousness. Oh, yes. Selfish. Or self. <laughs> <laughs> self-righteousness. You are taking a selfie of... I am good. Yes. <laughs> but now we shall talk about self-righteousness, yeah? yeah? But now we look at uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. It says, By the deeds of the law, mm -hmm. there shall no flesh be justified mm -hmm. in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. For by the law mm -hmm. is the knowledge of sin. Yeah. That is very important. Yeah. Yeah. The law brings the knowledge of sin. Yes. But he continues and says, But now this righteousness that we are talking about, mm -hmm. the righteousness of God without the law, is manifested. Mm -hmm. So the righteousness of God does not function where the law is. is. Now that takes, back, takes us back to John 1 17. Yes. The law was given through Moses. Yes. But grace and truth. So righteousness can never, the righteous, this righteousness of God can yes. never be on the side of the law. Exactly. So it is on this other side yes. that are right with Christ. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's why he starts the verse, verse uh, he, starts, he starts the verse by saying mm -hmm. the deeds of the law. Mm -hmm. For, therefore, by the deeds of the law, mm -hmm. no there shall no flesh be justified. Yes. Yeah. And the other word for justification is righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's they are the same words, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you realize the righteousness of the righteousness of God yeah. cannot function where they are the deeds of man, where where man is trying to work out yeah. his way yeah. to please God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of God is not revealed there. Yeah. It is not where the law is. Yeah. The righteousness of God only functions where the grace of God is. Wow. The grace of God yes. is the gospel. It says even the righteousness of God yes. through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. To all and upon all who believe. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference. Yes. Yeah. So now this righteousness, mm -hmm. so as we saw, it's also a gift. Mm -hmm. And it's the gift of righteousness. Yes. You say that uh, it can only be appl applicable yeah. where, there is have, no law. where there is no law. Yes. So in the presence of the law, yes. what do we have? We have self self-righteousness. Self self-righteousness. <laughs> self-righteousness. Self self yeah. So uh, self-righteousness is about what I can do yes. uh, for God. Yeah. What I need to do to be uh, to be blessed by God. Yes. What I need to do to be healed. Exactly. What I need to do to uh, to be prospered. Yeah. Things we have five steps. Yes. We have five keys. Yeah. Twenty one principles. Yeah. And to godliness. Yeah. All those things. Yeah. They are the law. So yeah. in that place, uh -huh. the righteousness of God will not work. Yeah. And you say that the righteousness of God yeah. and the, the, those who receive grace, yeah. abundance of grace, yeah. and the righteousness of God, mm -hmm. they reign in life. Yes. Yeah. Now this word, reigning in life, yeah. reigning in life, may we may be talking about uh, reigning over circumstances, mm, yeah. reigning over sin, yes. reigning over sickness. Yeah. So you want to say, unless a man is established in God's own righteousness, yeah. he can never reign above these things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true, because uh, there's something I, I noticed with the conversation in between, that the, the law, through the law is the knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. yes. So that knowledge, it's like the law is a teacher having a blackboard with a chalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time you attend the class, he shows you how sinful you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. He will never show you how good you are. Yes. Mr. Law. Yeah, Mr. Law is always there <laughs> teaching you. And according to the scriptures, uh, the law is a teacher of sin, and then it points you to Christ. Yes. It will show you what you can. Every time I'm seated with you, I will show you your weaknesses. And then I will show you that you cannot do all these things. Mm -hmm. And now when, when the law came to its end, it had a purpose. Mm -hmm. It was to show us of someone who was greater, no who, who was supposed to give us the ability wow. to overcome it. Mm -hmm. And it taught us, it showed us of Christ Jesus. When the righteousness of God was manifested, which was prophesied 
or witnessed by the, the law witnessed. Wow. The law said, I know you cannot do this, but someone is going to come who will qualify you from this place and he will make you we will, will make it possible mm-hmm. for it to happen to you. Wow. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. He said, when you touch an unclean thing, you will become unclean. Mm-hmm. And now when he came, he says, now, this is how you reign. You, because you have received the abundance of grace mm-hmm. and of the gift of righteousness, what will happen, you will reign over everything. Mm-hmm. You will not be touching it and you become impure, but you will be purifying it by you yourself. So you are the one who makes or allows everything around you to, 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 to respond according to what he has qualified you to be. Yeah. Because the grace of God shows you what Christ has done and what he has done inside of you. In fact, it goes to a point where now it is no longer you who, who is doing these things. Mm-hmm. As we have said that he comes in us and he loves himself through the love which he is. Mm-hmm. He loves himself through that love. Mm-hmm. Same case applies. God reigns over everything. Mm-hmm. And he that reigns over everything now reigns in us over everything. Wow. And that is how we do it. Wow. Awesome. Praise God. Yeah, this yeah. is a wonderful. This is awesome. Yeah. So I have seen that Mr. Law is not a good guy. He's not a bad guy. Yes. Yeah. When he is used purposely. Yes. And yeah. the purpose of Mr. Law yeah. was to point you to Christ. Yeah. You are not supposed to get married to him. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. You are supposed to get married to Christ. Christ. Yes. Now Christ has arrived. Yeah. Mr. Law, yeah. his purpose was to show you the, the real husband. Yes. The real husband is Christ. Yeah. Stop flirting with Mr. Law. <laughs> Stop flirting with him. And now we are winding up. Yes. Uh, it has been awesome. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, you are blessed. I want you to say just one word. Uh-huh. If they forget everything you said, yeah. what do they remember? Awesome. Thank you so much. One word. One word. Yes. One yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One. All right, all right, all right. The righteousness of God. <laughs> Sir, we are practicing law. <laughs> now you have said 25 words. Anyway, this is what I, I would really love you never to forget. That the grace of God is God himself living through you. And you cannot become that way by any other way, but by believing in Christ. And when he went, he said, whoever believes in this shall be saved. Whoever does not believe stands already condemned. So it's by believing, and then you receive that access. Yeah. One word. (laughs) One word. So I will tell them that if you believe, as Bonnie has said, you have become the righteousness of God. And it is by this righteousness that you reign in life above everything. Yeah including sin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow, amen, amen. It has been wonderful. Yeah. Father, we thank you for that wonderful conversation that we've had in this place. Yes. We call our viewers and our listeners blessed amen. because they are established in your grace mm-hmm. and they can never be defeated. Yeah. Sin mm-hmm. shall not have dominion over them yes. for they are not under the law but under the grace of God. Nothing will rule over them because they reign in life by one, Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, thank you so much for being with us. This has been Beholding Christ Show at Wema TV, brought to you today by the the Christ Beholders team, and we are excited about it. So do not miss in our next episode because we'll continue this discussion. So my name is Ben Fetcher, and you are blessed because indeed in Christ, no one is blessed like you.